Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome an outstanding parliamentarian, the Right Honourable John Redwood MP. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to have helped select Boris Johnson as our leader, and I am proud that with the support of the Wokingham Association and their advice, Boris went on to call an election and call a halt to a rotten parliament, a parliament that was out to thwart the wishes of the British people, a parliament that was unbelievably anti-democratic. And when I look out... When I look out today at the Labour Party trying to drift from the far left of the road to the left of the road whilst having their own public civil war, or when I look out at the rump of the Liberal Democrat Party who are neither liberal nor democratic and are still wanting to thwart Brexit, or when I look out at the, the angry groups of SNPs uh, MPs who think every debate in Parliament should be about how they can split their part of the United Kingdom off in violation of a major referendum the Scottish people held not very long ago. I am mightily re relieved that we have a Conservative-led Parliament and a Conservative Government. But as your Chairman has had to point out, there are occasions when a man who is desperate to support our leader and our party has sometimes to say no. And there are times when we need to remind our leadership that we want a conservative government with conservative principles. And I don't you. And I got news for you, the people in the red wall seats didn't vote for Labour light, they voted for something different. The Brexit voters didn't vote for Labour light or more socialism, they voted for something different. And what I think they voted for, I call helping people on their personal journeys. They looked to the Conservative Party to lower the taxes so they got more of their own money to spend. They looked to the Conservative Party to allow entrepreneurs to keep more of their own money to invest in the future and to invest in jobs. They looked to the Conservative Party not to destroy the public schools but to lift the quality of the state schools so that they can compete. And they look to the Conservative Party not to nationalise everything and not to take more and more money from the rich because a lot of people are not that jealous. It's not that people want to take the money from the rich. It's they want to be richer themselves. And that is what we do. <laughs> so let me take you to this little argument I've been having with some of our colleagues in government over national insurance increases and what we spend the money on. And let me just give you one or two facts, because I do find some of the people I discuss this with in Parliament don't do facts. And although that there are hundreds of pages of very good information about what everything costs and what we spend it on and all the rest of it, most parliamentary debates don't do numbers at all. We have endless MPs standing up saying there must be more money for health. But if you ask them what today's budget is, they haven't a clue. And I don't know about you, but I don't determine a budget is short of money until I know what it is, and what it's buying, and what it can't afford. And that is the debate we need to be having about the health budget. The health budget overall, public health generally, including the NHS, is said by the Treasury this year to be £230 billion. Pounds. And if you wanted hypothecated taxes, which I hear are now popular in some parts of the Treasury, uh, you would need to pay all of income tax, all of stamp duty, all of inheritance tax, all of capital gains tax, and that would buy you the health budget this year. So it's not a small portion of national insurance that will be the health budget, and I hope people aren't getting a misunderstanding about this, that you need all those wealth and income taxes to sustain the current health budget. Next number. That budget is 64 billion a year more than the budget was just before COVID. Now, I was very keen on them greatly increasing the spending to offset the economic damage being done by the 
COVID policies, and I was very keen for them to spend whatever it took on tackling COVID. And when you've got a pandemic and too many people are dying, yes, you just spend money. You don't argue about pennies or pounds or whatever. You get on with it. But what we should now do is to say, we boosted those budgets by 74 billion, uh, 64 billion a year to primarily deal with the pandemic. Where is that money going next? Because you don't need all those one-off costs every year, because you did all that. You put the vaccines in, you put the test and trace in, all those extra expenses. So with the famous 12 billion, when I was uh, briefed about this by ministers and their officials, along with other MPs, done on a cross-party party basis these days, I'm afraid I did say, what would I get if I voted for the 12 billion? And they said, oh, well, you know, the waiting lists have come down. So I said, oh, great, tell me how many the waiting lists are roughly going to come down by. What, what sort of guarantee? What's your offer? Oh, no, no, we can't promise they're going to come down. Uh, we can't say a number. No, but, you know, you need more money to bring the waiting list down. So I then said, well, look, your budget for the current year for test and trace is 15 billion for the year. And this isn't the setup year. And I said, I do notice quite a lot of people don't seem to be doing much testing and tracing anymore. Um, and couldn't we see what you could do for test and trace, now it's all up and running, for say 3 billion next year. And I've got you your 12 billion, which you tell me might be helpful in getting the waiting list down. So do you really need the 12 billion for the national insurance? And didn't get a very clear answer to that one. So this was part of the background why I found it a bit difficult to vote for the idea that 12 billion was needed. So I, I say to Saj, you know, a friend of mine, wish him well, clever man, going in there as the new Secretary of State. Saj, ask some questions. Challenge your chief executives. Find out where all that money is going to. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but when I go shopping um, and say I've got 12 quid, I don't have 12 billion quid, but say I've got 12 quid, I don't go into the shop and put the £12 on the counter and then say, that's yours. Uh, now, by the way, is there anything you'd like to give me for it? <laughs> and and they, they don't normally say, well, actually, not at the moment, John, but trust us, you know, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be something nice along. If you put your 12 quid on the counter, mate, you'll be all right. Uh, call me old-fashioned, but I like to know what I'm getting, what the price is, and then I decide whether I like that shop and whether that's a good deal or not. And I think that's more of the approach we need from ministers running these great public services. They've got to say, yes, we don't deprive you money if it's going to save lives. We don't deprive you money if it's going to invent new treatments. We don't deprive you money if you're going to pay staff properly. We believe in all that. All, all this nonsense that we're the blooming is, no, we're not. I want people better paid. But I also want higher productivity and higher quality. Uh, I think you can do more with fewer people who are better trained and better motivated and then other people can do other new things. You need the enterprise revolution. That's what we need. And so we need these ministers to take on the chief executives who have paid lots of money and say, right, what am I getting for my 200000 a year from you, Mr. or Mrs. Chief Executive? Uh, and can I see just a few targets that are, uh, go to the heart of what we're trying to do and can I make sure you're offering me value for money. Now, in, in pursuit of this, because um, obviously these debates go on, I'm very pleased that the government said, yes, we, you're, you're Johnny, quite right, we, we need good value for money in our health service. And so Saj has appointed a former general to go in and identify waste. Let's call him the waste finder general. Uh, and I wish him well, you know, lovely. Uh, but it's going to take several months, and he's an outsider. And so I've got a bit of advice for Saj today. By all means, the general might come up with something and it might be very helpful, but Saj, why don't you have a really serious meeting with your chief executives this week and challenge them on where the waste is that the waste finder general might find and say, let's not wait for the waste finder general to actually find it. You, the chief executives, should be motivated to get rid of it now. And give me a target. Tell me what you're going to do. Might even give them a bonus. You know, if they came up with a billion of waste, that would be worth a decent bonus, wouldn't it? But the bonus would be conditional, and you want to carry them with you. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've listened to an awful lot. I mustn't go on too long. But my final observation is this to the government. Trust in markets. 
Understand the role of Christ in bringing supply to line with demand. Understand that many of the things that people value and need in this country are not supplied by nationalised concerns, but are supplied by free enterprise. Promote free enterprise. Get out of the way. Cut the taxes. Don't overburden people. Get the freedoms of Brexit pulsing through the economy so that we can do in other fields what we just did with vaccines by cutting loose from the, the European experience and the European rules. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Conservative way. The way you get the deficit down is to promote growth. The way you get more tax revenue rolling in to pay for your health service is cut the rates and get a bigger cake. The way you show people they were right to vote Brexit and Conservative is to help every one of us on our personal journeys. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be better off there's nothing wrong with wanting to be better paid, but the Conservative message is it goes to those who work for it and it goes to those who trust the market and believe in enterprise.